In today's video, we will discuss a very important concept called dynamic memory allocation. Normally, when we create a variable, what happens behind the scenes is that the compiler will allocate space inside memory to store the value. Also, the compiler will deallocate the space created for this value in order to delete it. So when we create a variable or an array, this all happens during compile time. But with dynamic memory allocation, it's completely different. What happens is that the variable created dynamically will be allocated only at runtime, and runtime meaning when the code is actually running, while at compile time it means that the code is still being compiled by the compiler to be converted to machine language. In C++, we use the new keyword to dynamically allocate space. Let us see how. To create dynamic variables in C++, what you should do is you should use pointers. Now, if you need to refresh your memory about pointers, make sure to check out this video. Now let me go ahead and define a integer pointer like this and I'll say that this integer pointer will be a null pointer for now. Now a null pointer means that this is a pointer that doesn't point at any address. Now I'm going to go ahead and say something like ptr equal to new int. So what I'm doing here is that I am dynamically allocating space in memory using the new keyword. And also this new keyword will return an address and this address will be stored inside this pointer. Now what I could do now is I could dereference this pointer in order to store a value inside this address. So by dereferencing this pointer, what you're doing is that you're accessing the content inside this address and you are trying to assign a value inside this address, which should be an integer like 12. Now I'm going to go ahead and say something like cout and I'll dereference my pointer to access the value inside the address and I'm going to say something like is at address like this and I'm going to use the pointer because the pointer stores the address of this value. Now before running our code what we should do is we should always deallocate the space created meaning we should always delete this new value or this dynamic value we created by using the delete keyword and saying delete ptr or delete this dynamic variable. So why should we do this? Well, we should always free up space to prevent memory leaks. So always remember that when you use the new keyword, you should also delete the value of the dynamic variable. So now let's go ahead and run our code. Let me compile and then launch like this. As you can see, we get this output 12 is at address, this address, okay? Now let me ask you this question. What is the difference between the dynamic variable we created and this normal variable we have right now? Well, basically, this variable right here is created at compile time, meaning the compiler allocates space inside the stack and the stack is actually a data structure that the compiler manages. So basically, this variable is created at compile time and is stored inside the stack of the compiler. And the compiler is also responsible for allocating this variable and also deallocating or deleting this variable to free up space in memory. However, this dynamic variable right here is created at runtime. And basically, we as programmers are responsible for allocating this variable as well as deallocating this variable. However, the dynamic variable, instead of being allocated in the stack, which is for the compiler, it is being allocated inside the heap, which is a memory that is managed by us, the programmers. So this is the main difference, if you want, between those two variables. Now, we know how to create normal arrays or static arrays like this one. So int array like this and size 10. So this is a static array. It is created at compile time, right? But can we create an array at runtime? Well, yes, we can. Let me give you this scenario. So basically, we have a teacher. This teacher wants to store the name of their students inside an array. So basically, we can create an array of strings, for example, like this, and for example, of size 30, because there is 30 students. But what if you don't know how much students you have inside this array? What you should do here is you should create a dynamic array. Okay, let's see why. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a string pointer like this, and it's going to be a null pointer like this. Now, I'm going to create, after this, a variable called size and assign to it the value of zero. What I'm going to do is I'm going to ask the user to input size of array like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to receive the input and store it inside the size variable. Now, because I'm getting this input at runtime, what I should do is that I should use a dynamic array because a dynamic array is allocated inside the heap during runtime. And because we don't know what's the size of the array or how much the size of the array should be, that is why it is a good scenario for us to use a dynamic array. Let's go ahead and see it. So I'll say array like this equal to new string like this and the size will be the size that the user inputs. 
After this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a for loop in order to fill this array. So let me go ahead and give the condition as well as increment i at each iteration. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say input element like this. And so I'm going to receive this element, but I'm going to add it inside the index or inside the array. So at each iteration, I will change. So basically, we will add our elements inside this array. Now I'm going to go ahead again and create a for loop like this and to in order to actually print this array. Now I'm going to say size like this and I++. Now I'm iterating through this dynamic array and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use C out like this and I'll mention array index I like this in order to fetch the element at the certain index. And like this I'll mention C out and L like this. Now let me go ahead and show you before we run our code how we could pass a dynamic array to a function. Now let me go ahead and delete this and go up here and create a void print function. So void print like this. And because the dynamic array here is actually a pointer, what you should do is you should basically create a parameter that is a pointer like this. So once we create this pointer right here, what I could do is I could pass the array. Now, because we need the size of the array, I'm going to also give a size parameter. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this code right here. And let me go ahead also and change the name of the parameter to array like this. Now this actually works. So right here in the main, I'm going to say print like this and I will pass the array pointer and as well as I'm going to pass the size. As you can see, this works properly. Now let's go ahead and compile and launch our code. So now compile and launch. As you can see, input size of the array like this. Let me first of all raise this interface. Okay. So basically input size of the array. This is at runtime. Let me go ahead and give it three. So now what we did is we actually created a dynamic array after receiving the input from the user. This doesn't work if you wanted to use a normal array. This only works when you want to create a dynamic array because a dynamic array is created at runtime, so when the code is running, but not at compile time, when the code is being compiled. Now let's continue. So I'll input the element, let's say John, let's say David, and now let's say Jason, for example. As you can see, these are the elements of our array. Now at the end, what we should do is deallocate the array. So what we can say down here is delete followed by square brackets because it is an array and then mention the pointer. So always make sure to deallocate or delete the dynamic array at the end. All right, this is it about dynamic memory allocation in C++. You will definitely see this concept a lot when you'll be learning about classes and objects and data structures because this is a very important concept to know. Now, thank you for watching today's video. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date for the next C++ tutorial video. Now, I invite you to click on one of these end screens that will appear right now, and I hope to see you in the next video.